welcome back to the podcast, Marlon. Uh, this is a bit of a different episode where normally we have a, a topic with a list of questions and things where I'm asking uh, whoever it is that we have on the podcast about a particular topic. But today it's it, it, we're doing something a bit different. It's been a while since we've done an update on antibiotics perspectives and what we've been working on and some of the changes that have happened. You know, in the last year, uh, a number of things have shifted in the organization and want to hit some of those, but also more of a zoomed out picture of what is the the vision overall of the organization and then the mission of like what we're trying to do. And then we'll hit a few things on how we're doing that and where we're going and uh, why we're doing this to begin with. So uh, by way of introduction, you know, Marlon, you're the executive director of Anabaptist Perspectives. So it seemed pretty fitting that <laughs> I would get to interview you on this particular uh, topic. So we'll go back and forth on this. <laughs> and hopefully this will be encouraging to our listeners and also kind of pull back the curtain a bit on what goes into this podcast and uh, what we're trying to do here. So, um, yeah, uh, as far as that goes, as far as introduction, uh, I'd say we just jump right in. And uh, where would you like to go from here? So, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited. You know, both you mentioned changes in the organization, which were basically putting things in place to keep going for the long haul and really excited about that. And then, yeah, we also want to talk about our mission statement, how mm. we view our mission and why we're doing what we're doing. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about both of those. Um, so, I mean, maybe changes in the organization. We just hit those very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, and, you know, maybe probably listeners don't necessarily notice those changes, um, but they, they do have ripple effects on the kind of content we make. And I'm really excited about it because I think overall um, it'll end up being a better experience for everybody, and in, in especially the audience, for having – hopefully higher quality content because of some of those changes. So yeah, if you want to briefly hit some of those things that have shifted in the last year. Um. So the big one was, you know, staffing where we hired a dedicated, um, I want to say media editor, but <laughs> he's also a lot more than a media editor, um, but on the whole production side of things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that has just given us the capacity to, you know, release episodes weekly, Mm -hmm. to make them a little longer, to experiment with new things. Um, that is really exciting. And then the other shift, which hopefully has not been a very noticeable shift because it's intended to be <laughs> a thoroughly, you know, behind the scenes support what we're doing, um, keep moving, um, is, you know, I myself have been involved in the organization in various ways since the beginning, initially an advisor and then a board member. And then we kind of did a, executive committee, which we still have an executive committee. But yeah, as I took on that executive director um, kind of role and am moving toward um, that being more full-time with Anabaptist Perspectives, you know, the goal there is just to, you know, I'll continue to be involved in all the things it was in before. <laughs> some content, um, some back-end things, and the goal was just to, yeah, be able to facilitate mm -hmm. staff working well doing lots of interviews with, mm -hmm. you know, our various um, Jaron and Reagan hosting, me doing some hosting and just that kind of back end stability. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key word is, is the stability um, with a podcast like this. You know, it's a lot of effort to make episodes and it's hard to stay consistent and have a high bar for quality uh, because we you know, want to make sure these episodes are, are as good as they can be. Right. Uh, so having staff that are more available um, with you transitioning full time here in a couple months and uh, Carl, which is behind the cameras right now, uh, you know, with him being full time, this is huge because it feels like we're able to spend more time on making stuff better. I guess I don't know. This feels a bit simplistic, but, but but that's that's really what we're trying to do. You know, we want this to be as helpful as it can be to as many people as possible. And hopefully that will allow us to interview even more guests and get even more perspectives and more input um, so that it can help more people. That's ultimately the goal. So, right. um, and well, one yeah. shout out, even a little, you know, a little further behind the scenes is just our board has been, been working through things. How do they function, function well as a board and all of that? Um, again, that's not something you usually talk about on the podcast, but that is part of, <laughs> yeah, certainly part of the stability as we look at the next mm -hmm. number of years here. Yeah, and that's that's huge, actually. So there's a 
you know, we should link this actually in, in the description. It's been a while since it's a little bit dated now, but myself and Jaron, so we're we're the founders of Anabaptist Respectives, talked through like how it started and did mm-hmm. an episode on that. And it was kind of interesting. It was kind of fun to reminisce. And, and I look at that episode now, I think that was two years ago that we recorded that. And it's just like, wow, this has come a long ways stability wise compared to where it was when it started. So really it essentially it was just Jaron and I had this idea and I'm like, well, let's go talk to some people and ask these questions. Cause like, you know, we don't have all the answers, but we can ask, um, you know, I asked some of my teachers at, at Bible school and things like that. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the, how the podcast started, which is all good. But to see it now grow way beyond that to where you have a board, you have an executive team there, there's so much more stability and anchoring to making sure, okay, is this, are we going the right direction here? You know, what topics should we do? Who should we interview next? Having that, anchoring is a lot better than, you know, just me and Jaron say brainstorming ideas, which was a lot of fun and and it worked, you know, but to move past that and go a lot deeper, um, it feels really good. And hopefully that's reflected for the audience where they can say, you know, it's better content, uh, uh, again, more anchored, more depth, things like that. So, Mm -hmm. um, so with that being some of the big pieces that have moved in the last year or so, um, let's zoom out and take a look at our vision statement. Uh, so yeah, you want to say what our vision statement is and then anything else you want to un- unpack on that as well. Yeah. Using digital media to encourage allegiance to Jesus' sacrificial kingdom. Hmm. And then how do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, that's a great point. So there's a lot of pieces in here. Um, and if I understand correctly, there's an essay that you wrote on this. It's up on our website. Um, on this concept of the sacrificial kingdom and and so forth. There's a number of chunks here. So yes, the focus on digital because we we want accessibility. So digital, anywhere where you can access the internet, you should be able to find our stuff all around the world. So which is neat because we have a global audience. That is the goal. That is is really, really neat to hear from people from, you know, I'm in Canada and I listen to you or I'm in the UK or I'm in Australia, you know, whereas if back in the day, say physical CDs is very limited on distribution. So that's a key piece. Um, encouraging allegiance, you know, Jesus' sacrificial kingdom. That's really the kingdom of God, the the, the emphasis there. And encouraging, you know, we don't want to use this as like, you need to believe this way or um, even that more um, evangelistic push. You know, that's not quite the vibe we're going for. It's encouraging people. It's strengthening uh, people. That's that's the thought process there. Um, so, and there's a lot of different ways we do that. So, obviously, we have this main podcast, which is video and audio form. You can get that all over um, anywhere you get podcasts. But also, you're pretty involved with the essays side of things. Maybe we'll talk about that later. But publishing <laughs> a lot on our website and as an email newsletter. And then we have a monthly email newsletter in addition to all that. Um, so, really leaning into that form of content and that form of distribution. Um, it was, is really at the core of, of what we're trying to do. So, <laughs> yeah, anything more you want to add on that, though, as far as the vision statement goes? Yeah, I mean, so, well, we unpacked that with the mission statement. Um, so maybe we jump there and we have those mm-hmm. three pieces of the mission statement that give a little bit of flesh and specificity mm-hmm. to, well, how is it that we encourage allegiance? <laughs> you so, know, after all, we're not, you know, we're not putting out wor- worship music, which could be a perfectly sensible way of mm-hmm. encouraging allegiance. Um, so, yeah, yeah. you may, you want to read the first first phrase of the mission statement? Yeah, so I'll read the first one, and then you can, you can break it down. Like, what does that look like? So, yeah, the mission statement is essentially saying, broadly speaking, how we're going to do this, right? So, first point of the mission statement uh, says this, engage with questions important for faithful living in ways that are biblically, historically, and theologically informed. So you unpack what that what that looks like. That's kind of a mouthful. There. It is a bit of a mouthful, um, but yeah, there's reasons for. If it feels like a little bit awkward wording, um, there's reasons for <laughs> what we really wanted to capture there. Um, so we had those big words at the end, you know, biblically, theologically, historically. So we're not a we're not a straight up biblical studies or biblical exposition podcast. Uh, we're not a straight up history or church history podcast or channel. We're not a straight up theology um, channel either. Um, All of those are important, um, worthwhile endeavors, but they're not um, precisely what we're engaged with. And yet we feel a need to pull there, right? So you will find history. You will find biblical exposition. um, You will find some theological discussion. And 
you know, our sense is that it's very important to have those reference points and anchors. Mm. Um, but the statement starts out with engage with questions important for faithful living. Um, again, back to that thing of encouraging allegiance. Um, so that's part of our reference point as well. If we're going to encourage allegiance to Jesus' sacrificial kingdom, what are the things that we need to talk about? Mm. We can't talk about all of them, but what are some things that <laughs> we could could put on the table, um, could put on the channel that really would be helpful for that? Mm. But we want to do those with context and we want to do those, and our aim is to do that with some level of depth. It's not uh, it's not an academic podcast. It's not a specialist podcast, um, but our goal is to to tap into those both in a general way and to, you know, sometimes interview some specialists and so on in those areas as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, Reagan, you, you do a lot of interviewing people. Maybe you have comments on that. <laughs> well, ultimately, the way I, I've thought about that um, – especially the first half of this phrase, engaging with questions important to faithful living. Mm-hmm. That was really how it started for me, you know, was I, I had these questions. So I was like, well, how does this look? Or how should I think about that? And I, I I don't know. Like, I'm, you know, I'm young. I don't understand this. You know, this is 10 years ago or so. And I was like, well, I may not have those answers, but what if I would go talk to someone who's thought about it a lot or maybe has a lot mm-hmm. of life experience in that area? And I asked them these questions. Oh, but what if I would record it? Because it might be helpful for someone else. And that's really where the whole spark for the conversation, or sorry, for the podcast came from, is like sit down with people and have a conversation with them and ask these questions and and put it out there. And maybe it will be helpful for, for people. And it has been, apparently. You know, it was, it's, it's been quite... Uh, it's been quite a joy, really, to engage with the audience um, with their with their follow up questions. And then actually a lot of our episodes come from people saying, oh, that was really interesting. But have you thought about asking this person this? I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's a really good point. You know, and then we'll ask that person, hey, would you want to come on the podcast and talk about this topic? Um, so audience suggestions, actually, those questions important for how do we how do we live out this thing, you know, called allegiance to Jesus kingdom? What does that look like? Um and one of the shifts Excellent. in the last while, too, has been uh, longer episodes so we can go more in depth, too. And I, I've really liked that. I, I've enjoyed the conversations a lot more because I feel like I can, can dig right in. Yeah, you can go deeper with some of the stuff, especially some of these bigger topics that we've tried to tackle, you know, recently is like, wow, like that was that was a chunk. You know, um, I think of specifically the one we did with David Berso on how, you know, he used to be an Anglican priest and then, well, he left. That's not something you can do in a, a short <laughs> episode. Like you have to you have to unpack that. There's a lot there. And wow, I learned so much from that episode. And interestingly enough, it's one of our most popular episodes this, this year so far. Um, so apparently it resonated with other people. And and so, yeah, it really comes back to engaging with those questions. Um and, and yeah, I've, I've learned a lot from that. So, um, okay, well, maybe I'll go to the next point of the mission statement here mm-hmm. and have you respond to this as well. So point number two, share stories in history, especially from the Anabaptist movement, as a source of understanding and inspiration for serving the king. So what does that look like? Right. So it moves it a little bit more specific, right? We said engage with questions, historically informed. And then we are specifying here and saying, yeah, actually, we do have a special responsibility for some history or personal stories Mm. um, because of how, because of how formative those are and so on. Um, To do that as a source of understanding and inspiration for serving the king. The word understanding comes before the word inspiration. (laughs) And that's actually really important there. Because, you know, one of the temptations with stories and history is to find find something from the past and paint it to look perfect. And, okay, here's the story. Now, if we can just all live up to the story, um, we certainly should be inspired by people from the past and by testimonies and stories of other people um, from the present. But... That word understanding comes from, kind of comes first. Um, is one of the Psalms that talks about the importance of, you know, telling the coming generation dark sayings from of old mm-hmm. and not hiding um, those things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that is also why we mention things like Mennonites and the Nazi regime or, mm-hmm. you know, how Mennonites done, dealt with the civil war in America. 
some positive, some negative, <laughs> um, and all of that. Another piece we've said there is especially from the Anabaptist movement. Um, and so let me unpack that word. Why do we say especially from the Anabaptist movement? Well, one, we are Anabaptists doing that. So that's our most natural, most natural source. Um, and we feel that's important, you know, for our Anabaptist listeners to understand something of their history. We also feel that there's lots of pieces in Anabaptist history that are valuable, you know, for the church more generally um, to understand. And of course, we're coming from our own particular corner of the Anabaptist world um, as we do that. Um, but we also don't want to be, we don't want to be limited there. Um, so that's not saying we don't cover other parts of history. <laughs> so, for example, Reagan, you recently interviewed Lucas Hilty, um, a couple episodes having to do with, you know, the church in ancient Syria, you know, thousand years or more before there was an Anabaptist movement. <laughs> so why did we do that? Yeah, exactly. That's a great, uh, that's a great one. I really enjoyed those with Lucas, by the way. My whole thought process there, uh, back to the point. The first point, actually, in the mission statement, you know, questions mm -hmm. that, that we have in engaging with those. I, it actually started as it, me being personally interested in that and being like, hey, I, Lucas, I've heard you've done a lot of work on the you know, church in the East. That's really interesting. Like, I don't know hardly anything about this. And then he starts telling me some things and we exchange some emails and like, wow, there is some really interesting things here that I just didn't know about. And then it got me thinking, I'm like, well... I bet a lot of other people don't know this. And this has been interesting and encouraging to me. And I have a lot more questions about it. Hey, Lucas, would you want to sit down and tell us this stuff? Because, yeah, this is way earlier than the Anabaptist movement and so forth. But it's a part of the church's story. And I think I think we should have an awareness of it. I think we should know about that. And I don't know of anybody else in our section, I guess you could say, of the conservative Anabaptist world that has done a lot of work in that part of early church history, um, the the Eastern Church, you know, it, well, go watch the episodes if you want the details, but um, in Syria, right. you know, Iraq, th some of these places. And I'm like, well, that's that's kind of too bad. Like we should we should look at that. Um, and apparently it resonated with other people because that those episodes were fairly popular, actually, which was interesting because it is a bit different than what we would normally be posting. But I felt like, yeah, that that's a, that's an important piece, you know, so I asked him others on the team. They're like, yeah, we should do it. And and I'm really glad um, to do things like that occasionally. I think those are valuable pieces for our our people to have an awareness of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a that's a commitment. It makes the podcast a little bit broader, mm -hmm. you know, makes it a little harder to peg a particular niche. Um, but it does feel like that is part of our our job is to bring a variety of these pieces together that, again, we're certainly not claiming to put everything on the table or to cover every topic. Mm. We're, we're, we're in no danger of running out of topics. <laughs> um, but it's part of our job to put together, you know, a broader range of these things that are like, mm. you know, this is important questions or important ways to be historically informed. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and so on. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really true. Um, so the third and last point of our mission statement uh, it says this, publish content regularly on major platforms, interact with audience responses, and build an expanding resource library. So yeah, you want to unpack maybe specifically, how, how do we do that? What does that look like? And why? <laughs> right. Well, I might let you do a lot of that unpacking, but <laughs> um, this one really gets into, you know, more practical specifics. How do you distribute these things? Now that you've talked about questions <laughs> or talked about history, how do we distribute it? So we've always had an emphasis on wide distribution um, in the sense of, you know, a lot of platforms and so on. You talked a little bit about this at the beginning. Um, you want to just, you know, maybe run through very quickly the main platforms where we are releasing content? Yeah, that that's always been a piece we've emphasized is making sure this stuff is available in, in all kinds of different forms. Um, so we're, a, a number of our listeners are from the more conservative groups, Mennonites, you know, maybe even Amish, and often don't have access to the full internet or or no access to the internet um, for various reasons, which which we've done some episodes on that, like uh, the Anabaptist views on, different views on technology and things, mm -hmm. really fascinating stuff. So one of the things we started recently is a dial-in phone line. Oh, you don't have internet? 
that's no problem. You can dial in on any phone uh, to our number, which we'll, I don't know, we'll put it down below or it's on our website, and you can listen to all our episodes. And that's that's a really neat way for people who, you know, maybe their churches don't have uh, internet or they, they've chosen not to have access to that. They can still listen. And that's important to us that the content is available if people want it, is, is the thought process. Another uh, option there is there's an app called Telegram, um, and a group turned, like, has a, basically a another service that runs on that. It's called CloudVail, and a lot of conservative Mennonites use that because it's not directly going to, like, a web browser or the internet, and they can message and send things around. So we post all our videos and um, podcasts there, and it's a really neat way. People can get it directly on their phones, message to them. They don't have to go to the website. They don't have to go to YouTube or access the internet, and it works really well for people, again, who, you know, prefer not to use the internet in that way or choose not to, um, and that's been really neat, actually. Often, we'll get more views through those types of platforms than we will, say, on, on like, YouTube, which is really surprising to me, but, but pretty neat, you know? Um, and then, of course, we're posting full-length episodes over on Twitter now, so that's neat. Uh, Facebook, of course, you know, here on YouTube, which is if you're watching this, it's pretty likely you're seeing it on YouTube. Um, it's available as just audio only on podcasts, any any podcast provider. You should be able to find it. Instagram, things like that. Um, one we actually did a few years ago, and we need to do that more of this, but is released an audio book. So, you know, some people prefer to listen to books instead of read, you know, while they're driving to work, say. Um, so like, well, that would be an interesting to break into that space. So we made an audiobook um, in collaboration with David Berceau. Um, anywhere you get your audiobooks, you should be able to find it. It's called In God We Don't Trust, which is uh, an interesting title and and definitely gets some opinions thrown around. So that's fun. Um, you can you can get it there. Those are the main ones. Um, you know, our essays that are published on our website, those can be gotten through email. So those are often sent to, to many people through email um, and so forth. I, I think that hits the main ones. But all that to say is just we're, we have a fairly wide net of distribution. And I, I think that's important to us because we have some people watching us on Twitter who don't even know about our YouTube channel. You know, I was just messaging a guy on Twitter uh, the other day and he's like from – you know, from France and, and he's watching us on, on Twitter. It's like, oh, that's really neat, you know, and um, things like that. So anyways, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah, anything more you'd like to, to toss in there? Yes, it is important to us and it does make a lot of work. <laughs> Fortunately, we have a very good um, publishing assistant who has very much streamlined the publishing. So mm -hmm. <laughs> gets an amazing amount, gets all of, all of that pushing out to various platforms done um, in an amazingly um, streamlined fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and one of those questions that I've gotten people ask you know, is just like, okay, that's a lot of effort, you know, and our episodes are a lot of effort. Um, you know, it'd be so much simpler if we would just do a Zoom call with whoever we want to interview and hit record, and that would be our episode. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But one of the things we've really started leaning into in the last couple of years is this, what I call the evergreen concept or evergreen as in it's it's there for a while. Like it's not something that pops up in the news feed or something is gone the next day. We, we're wanting to lean more into things that last. So we're not doing reactions to um, current events or, or um, pressing news, things like that. You're not really going to see on this podcast. We didn't release a video in response to the assassination attempt, which happened just shortly before we're mm -hmm. recording this update. Yes, exactly, which is a huge thing, you know? I mean, it's a big, big deal in the news, but we're not really interested in those types. I'm not saying we would never, you know, do episodes on more current things, but we're interested more on evergreen. And when I say evergreen, I mean, someone could watch these videos years from now and still get the same value from them. So that results in a couple things. Uh, we want to do our interviews in person. So that's a lot more work, but we feel feel that's really valuable. I think we've all kind of learned that since COVID. You know, Zoom is wonderful in some things, but it, it can't replace in-person communication. So, you know, filming things in person, we're aiming for a, a high quality standard, um, a high editing standard. You know, it needs to look good, sound good, and, and, and have that quality that will last. Um, and what's interesting to me is a lot of our, we have older videos that are still getting tons of views today, even though they were filmed, say, six years ago. And that's really neat because that's telling me that it's, it's kind of this weight of responsibility when we record something, knowing that, you know, years from now, someone's probably still going to be watching this or we would hope, you know. And, um, yeah, we're not really interested, in, again, in things that will just be in the feed one day and gone tomorrow. Um, we're going for something more permanent. And, you know, that's, that's something we've really been leaning into the last um, last two years, I would say. And um, 
yeah, I, I really, I feel like that's, that's, that's the area we want to be working in and, um, <laughs> Yeah, that that evergreen concept. So, any anything right. more you want to add on on that or the publishing um, and yeah, yeah, what we're building. I mean, even on the technical side, when we do do remote episodes, um, you know, we're working to make that beyond a Zoom call, mm. finding a little better platform, using you know the best equipment that's that's feasible for for what we're doing. So we still got a few of those remote episodes, but you know, even there, working as hard as we can mm. on those, and then. Yeah, the whole thing of evergreen content, a library. You know, that's one reason we carefully, carefully and systematically, you know, set up the website. And it pulls in our YouTube videos, our podcasts, essays, which are written text, is it does create a library. It does create a searchable library. It's not just a feed. And of course, YouTube is not just a feed either. YouTube keeps surfacing plenty of videos five or six years later, mm -hmm. um, which is part of our goal. Mm -hmm. Yes, that hits the main points of the of the mission statement. Um, but yeah, where, where would you like to pivot from here? Uh, where What else would you like to add in, in this video? So one last point on that mission statement, mm -hmm. um, which does say to interact with audience responses. Um, again, something we've prioritized. So the most direct way that happens is, you know, Jaron Miller or other uh, team member and host does a lot of interaction with our YouTube comments and we get, you know, direct messages as well. Um, that's important. Um, something else we've been able to do over the years and exciting to do is to be able to, to jump off of, you know, YouTube comments or emails and carry the conversation forward. Somebody mm -hmm. responds or asks a question about an episode and we've often been able to to carry that forward, uh, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. Yes, that that really summarizes a lot of, you know, this is what we're trying to do here. Here's why. And I think we just, it, it, again, it, it amazes me, you know, the the responses that we get, people's um, encouragement and, and ideas that come from the audience of topics, questions we can ask. That, that's really fun. Um, and really, I... I really enjoy getting to travel around and meet these people and get their input and and record it and and share it with others, you know, for the benefit of others. That's that's ultimately uh, what we're trying to do. So, one last piece, maybe to mention um, as well as we we have this partner program that we have, which I don't know the numbers, but I I think we're a nonprofit. So I think the um, as far as financially, I'm gonna what is it like fifty percent, close to fifty percent of our our monthly budget is coming through our partner program. Is that correct? Probably not quite 50 percent, but yeah, very substantial. Mm -hmm. And when we say partner program, we're referring to, you know, a regular monthly gift. Mm -hmm. Anywhere it, from a dollar to a thousand dollars. I mean, a thousand dollars is not an upper limit, but currently, <laughs> you know, those monthly gifts range from one dollar to a thousand dollars. And that's through like Patreon or, or our website. And basically that's like a whole nother podcast feed and bonus material and things that we that we publish over there. And it just... I guess the reason I'm saying that is, yeah, lots of lots of people giving a couple dollars a month, you know, and and that actually really makes a difference because it you know it costs money to to make it, this podcast and, mm -hmm. and keep things running. But yeah, no, that's something uh, that's actually tremendously encouraging in this mm -hmm. is to know that you know there's a hundred plus people um, that believe in this strongly enough to have that recurring monthly support. Yeah, and of course, very grateful and encouraged by you know others who support you know, periodically or, or every year or whatever. Um, but just a strong, strong encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you said, um, as a thank you to anybody who's has that monthly, um, recurring gift, you know, we do a short, uh, we just call it the partner program, but typically just an audio only, uh, podcast, um, has its own feed, um, usually releasing about every three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, if people are interested in that, you can just go to our website and and join there or on on Patreon, and even a dollar a month, uh, we'll we'll get you access to all that. Um, and sometimes we'll publish bonus stuff that maybe gets cut from a main episode, and and we'll release it over there as a, as an extra or a bonus, um, things like that. It's, it's kind of a, a neat neat thing to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it it is really encouraging that that people are willing to support, and I think that's the the key here. You know, yeah, it is a nonprofit. You know, it's supported just by people who care to. Uh, 
financially get behind what we're doing here. And, and that, that means a lot. Okay, right. so I think we've hit, yeah, the main stuff on the mission and vision. Um, but yeah, is there other pieces you'd like to add to, um, to this as, as we go from here? Well, I'd like to just put in a plug for our email list. Um, I know email resonates with some people more than others. Some people say emails from the last century, but there's lots of people that still use email. Mm. <laughs> and I still use email regularly. Mm. There's places I follow and so on. Um, we do our best to make sure our email list is not spammy. Mm. Um, so typically there'll be one or two essays a month where it's an email with a link to the essay to read online or listen to it, as well as the full text right there. You can read it right in your inbox. And we send another monthly email that has a has a content roundup. So basically links to you know all the content released or featured in the last month and just a little bit of ministry updates. And then, you know, we may send occasionally a special email, but this is not a spammy feed. <laughs> uh, you can subscribe on our website, uh, anabaptistperspectives.org. And we can drop a link in the description here um, for the email newsletter. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to keep up with both content and, you know, to see when there's more occasional ministry updates and so on coming through. And Reagan, you usually have a little inspirational mm -hmm. piece in the mm -hmm. in one of those emails. Yeah, I usually write a piece um, for that newsletter um, as well. Yeah, that goes out once a month, so that's an extra piece uh, people can get if they if they would like. Um, yeah, so just kind of bringing it all back around. You know, there there's a lot of technical details and things that happen behind the scenes, but really, it comes back to the you know asking those questions for faithful living. You know, encouraging. Mm -hmm that allegiance to Jesus sacrificial kingdom. And yeah, it's been, it's been an honor to be a part of this podcast and really to meet a lot of incredible guests that have come on and, and shared their life experience and wisdom with us. I, that is, that is pretty special that people are willing to do that, you know, cause you and I don't have all the answers, right. Um, at, at all, <laughs> of course. So if we can bring people <laughs> in with a lot of, you know, experience in say a certain area and get their input on, on things, um, feel there's, there's real value in that. And, um, yeah, we're not going anywhere. I think this this is going to be around for a while. So uh, if people have ideas for topics or people we could have on the podcast, man, we, we love to hear that. So email us or, you know, um, send it to us some way or another and we'll see if we can make it happen. So I think that's that's kind of the lot, you know, pulling the pieces together. But yeah, if you wanted to add anything else as we bring this to a close. I mean, I think that's good. Okay. I'm grateful for what has happened here over the last six or seven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, everyone, for listening, watching, supporting. Um, we really do appreciate it. And uh, I suppose we'll, we'll catch them in the next episode then. Sounds good. <laughs>